guys, Casey from Jetty USA here, and I want to take some time and go over a feature with the Jetty transmitter systems that we feel often goes overlooked. It's going to be the Jetty telemetry data logging feature. So it's one thing to get telemetry data, it's another thing to be able to look at it in hindsight. And this is a great um, feature that can help you either pre-flight all the way to post-flight, even post-crash diagnostics. So the first thing that we want to talk about that we find it very helpful in is when you're doing your equipment test. This is great because you can set up your system and you can know whether or not you have any issues before you even take off. Second thing we do is system optimization. So we find data logging very helpful when we're doing the optimization. Say for example, a competition. You wanna see what setup runs the best and is most efficient and will help you achieve your goals. Third, we think post-flight evaluation is a very important factor. You can go ahead and take a look at the performance of your system and you can see what maintenance you may need, what items need to be um, replaced or relooked at. Also, we like to do post-crash diagnostics. So say you have an accident. Unfortunately, sometimes this is going to happen, but you're gonna wanna know why it happened and when it happened and how you can prevent it. All of these things are helpful to look at data logs in the telemetry logging feature of the Jetty systems. Take a look at our next section to see how to enable this telemetry data logging on your transmitter. So for the equipment test, we always recommend checking something like your signal strength, just to make sure that you are getting full strength. And if you're not, you should take a look at whether or not you need to relocate your, your antennas. We also check signal quality to see if you're actually getting 100% quality on it. If not, again, that's something you should relocate the antennas. So once you select your log file and you have your variables set, you can pull up the screen and you can see your graph here. Now you can zoom in and out on your time. So for this, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna zoom it to um, 100 seconds. So you can see our time now goes to 100 seconds. Um, for the first line, you see we have A1 shows your antenna one, then you hit the button to go to A2, and then you hit the button again to go to your quality. And this will go ahead and give you a representation of whether or not your equipment is placed in the right spot. For the system optimization, Part, we'd want to look at kind of how the system works together as a whole. So for this example, we chose to look at your battery voltage of the ESC, the amperage of the ESC, and your motor RPMs. So we hit the graph, and you can see all of these guys' relation to each other when we look at the graph. We're going to go ahead and we're going to scale it out to 200 seconds so we can get a, a good visual for time frame, and we can see how everything is corresponding. So how does the battery voltage hold in correlation to the load? How many amps is um, the system pulling with the propeller? And whether or not, say, the RPM increases as battery voltage drops. So for the post-flight evaluation, we think it's very important to look at things like your SBEC current or say the temperature of your ESC or even the temperature of your motor. This will go ahead and give us a good idea of what's going on with your components and it helps with the, the maintenance on them to make sure that everything is still running smoothly. So as you can see, we've got the current, the ESC temp and the motor temp. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you my graph, but this time I'm gonna go ahead and scale it on out to 400 seconds because I wanna see more of my flight time. Now you can always see the rest of it by turning your page. So you press these little arrows to go back and forth and see your entire flight. But for right now, we're gonna look at just the first 400 seconds of it. On this guy, um, you can see right here where we have our current, then you can see our temperature, and then you can see our temperature of our motor. 
And you also see the maxed out limits right there as it goes over your time. For this section, we're going to look at post crash diagnostics. And this is very important because things tend to happen. So we want to know what happened and exactly why it happened. So for this, I picked my antenna strength for my parameters and my antenna quality as well. I'm going to go ahead and view the graph on this and I'm going to zoom to a time frame of 400 seconds so I can see um, most of my flight in a single page. And I want to look to see if we've lost any of the antennas. And if we did, is the antenna shielded in my plane or maybe is it damaged? Um, and I also want to check my second antenna and verify that that as well was solid. And the last thing, I want to look at the quality of my signal and I want to see if for any reason maybe the, the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum had any interference or whether or not it was clear. Hey guys, James with Jetty USA, Esprit Tech. Thanks for sticking around for the programming portion of the video. As Casey explained, it's really important to make sure you're always set up and logging your flights. That way, if you do need to get back to it, if you're, if you're setting up a model or if something happens and you need to go back and take a look at what happened, you've always got access to it. So I'm gonna go through and show you real quickly how to get the logging set up. You've got a couple of options and we'll explain that as we go. I'm gonna go into the menu. Uh, we're going to go into our advanced properties and we're going to click on other model options. Uh, right there in that top group of items, the bottom item is start logging switch. And there's a couple of things you can do. If you set a switch here, you're going to need to remember to always throw that switch at the beginning of the flight. For those of you guys with a very good pre-flight routine, this might be fine. Problem I find is you're so excited either doing a hot star, you know, or hot refueling, or throwing a new pack and getting up in the air, it's very easy to forget to change uh, or to, to throw that switch and start a new log. So it's much easier if you leave it set to auto, which you'll notice the mode right below the start logging switch uh, is set to auto. Uh, keep in mind that this is gonna create a log every time that you fly. When you power down the model, power up the model, it's gonna create a new log. In order to do that, though, there's a couple of requirements, and the biggest one is going to be to add a timer to the model. So I'll go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. We're gonna go all the way back out to the main menu, go into timers and sensors. We're gonna click on timers and we're gonna add a timer. By adding this timer, you're giving, uh, creating something for the system to base the log on. Anytime the timer is running, the log is running. Uh, without that timer, it doesn't know when to start and stop the logs. Uh, one quick thing, it needs to be a free running timer. If you're already using a timer for your model for something else, whether it's flight time or battery time or whatever you're using it for, go ahead and set up a second timer on the model. Uh, you'll set that timer to free running so that it doesn't stop with whatever switch that you use it through. Uh, you physically have to stop it after the flight, and we'll show you how to do that as well. So you'll set the timer to free running. I will typically use uh, my throttle stick as my switch. Your throttle comes preset to go on and off at 50%. It's really nice because when you're taking off for the first time, you taxi out or when you're on the ground and you go into your idle up, it's automatically going to move that with your stick at center. If so long as it's free running, it won't stop if you come down below center. So if you're using it in a helicopter and this is for collective, uh, you don't have to worry about your negative collective shutting off the timer so long as you're set to free running. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on switch brings up select input control and I'm going to go ahead and give it my throttle and you'll see that my switch position on this one is a little high so one of the things we need to make sure that we're going to do is go into sticks and switches setup so I'm going to back all the way out into the advanced properties again into sticks and switches setup I'm going to go to that P4 I'm going to go ahead and make my switch position 50% on both sides that will allow me to pick that timer up or start that timer at 50% throttle. Now you'll see in that menu, as soon as I pass over, it goes into the position I wanted to go in. So we'll go ahead and hit escape. 
we'll go into the main menu, we're going to hit stop and clear. That stops and the data, stops the log, and stops the timer from running, all of those things at the same time. Now I'm going to go ahead and transition uh, over half throttle, and we'll see a blue circle start uh, uh, flashing on the screen. On a monochromatic screen, that'll be a dark circle at the very top of the screen next to your flight mode announcement. Uh, or the word default if you're not using flight modes. So long as that's flashing, you're running logs, you're creating uh, data for you to look at later. When you're finished with the flight, you come back to a closed throttle, you'll notice the timer continues to run as well as the log continuing. If you want to stop that log, you simply hit stop, stops that log, and you can move on, change the batteries, and start a new log by throttling up again. If you want to view those logs, all you'll need to do is from the front screen hit function button 5 corresponds to clear. It'll become a graph symbol. Hit that button again and you'll get into the data analyzer. Select the file that you want to pull a log from. Select the, the log that you want to view. Down at the bottom you simply select the variables that you would like to look at. Once you have those variables selected you hit the graph sign and if there were data available uh, it would graph that. We were not connected to an aircraft, so we weren't collecting data, so there's nothing to display. But that's the basic rundown on how you'll set up your logging, how you'll use your logging. If you have any other, other questions, just reach out to us at Esprit Tech or Jetty USA. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.